Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano update. This time I'm going over the June roadmap update. Now with a very fancy new website. Uh, if you haven't seen, uh, IOHK put out a blog post recent, uh, recently uh, by Richard Wilde, which explains uh, the new design for the roadmap website, uh, the rationale behind the design, all that kind of stuff. It's a really interesting read, uh, and it kind of explains how this website works. Uh, so I suggest you go read it. Yeah, I'll have a link in the description. But let's get right into it. All right, so first up, Byron. So what's changed? Uh, exchange enhancements has gone up from 90% to 100%, so now it's done. And this represents actually the release of Cardano SL uh, 1.2, and that includes the V1 version of the API, and that's mostly what this is targeting. Uh, they're still doing improvements to the API, uh, mostly related to external wallets, hardware wallets, this kind of stuff. Uh, but this exchange enhancements uh, component is done. Uh, meanwhile, uh, open or Boris delegation research. So the uh, paper we've been told will come out. Uh, I believe it was supposed to be uh, targeting end of this month. It is up twenty percent now. It's at ninety five percent. So looks like they're on track for getting this out soon. Uh, I'm not sure if they will have another paper on delegation. Cause I remember in one of the videos of IOSK. Uh, they mentioned they may have uh, multiple papers on incentives and delegation, so we'll see kind of what happens. Uh, but regardless, uh, we should see something coming out soon. Uh, next up is the implementation of the Open Ouroboros delegation. Uh, so I have to in the code base already. I mean, they have a lot of the proof of stake code already in there, uh, but I guess this will be implementing the actual uh, delegation incentive model uh, that they decide on uh, from this paper. So this has your percent obviously because they need to wait for the paper uh, to start doing this. Multi-signature transactions is up 5%. Uh, this is something actually fairly recently. I showed you guys this, I believe, last week, which is uh, in the Cardone SL code base. Uh, they've been working on adding a protocol level support uh, for multi-sig. So the multi-sig support they're adding has like a few caveats to it. Uh, so if you're interested, you can kind of go read this uh, paragraph here or read the code but mostly it's like a, if you want to create a multi-sig wallet uh, the order in which you create it has to also be the order in which you uh, validate and if a single validator uh, blocks the transaction even if you get you know, like if you say like four to five people need to sign and one of them blocks even if uh, four to five people sign it it will not go through so there's kind of like some details to it you can read it uh, on here, which I'll have a link to in the pull request, uh, but they're making uh, progress on this, which is good. Because uh, this is something that like uh, is required for a lot of like companies to get into this, obviously, because the company can't hold all its assets on the wallet that a single employee could uh, take over, right? Next up is wallet backends. This is up 5%. So wallet backend represents the rewrite of the wallets uh, that they've been working on. Uh, so if you ever go to the Cardano SL GitHub page, there's a folder called uh, Wallet New, and that represents kind of the new wallet backend. Uh, so if you're wondering what this contains exactly, this is uh, based on the wallet spec that was released a while back. So they're going through and kind of systematically implementing the wallet spec, and you know going through uh, chapter by chapter, also doing some uh, some formal ver verification in certain parts of it. Uh, so they're making progress on that, and that's uh, what this five percent represents. Uh, next up, uh, consensus incentive and fees is up 5%. This is also related to a uh, paper they're going to publish soon. Uh, if you want to see kind of what this paper is going to look like, a sneak peek. Actually, it's not on the roadmap page, uh, but there's a video by Lars where he explains kind of some of the ideas behind the paper uh, that will be released uh, hopefully shortly, uh, but no data announced as far as I know. Uh, so if you're interested in this video, again, it'll be in the description. You can go check it out. Quantum resistant signatures hasn't moved. Light client support hasn't moved, it's still 20%. Uh, that being said, I feel like uh, it is in some way uh, represented by this wallet backend change. Because as part of this uh, wallet backend change, uh, they've been making uh, new parts to the API to allow external wallets, uh, to allow wallets that uh, you can't spend on, like a wallet you can keep track of, but uh, the funds are restricted, all these kind of the features that will be uh, enabled. And so in a sense for this light client support, it's depending on this wallet backend. 
And so if this is progressing in a sense, you can say that the like client support is also progressing. We're making a progress towards this. Uh, human friendly addresses, however, has not changed as far as I know. Networking interestingly hasn't uh, changed, uh, despite the fact they've done a lot of refactoring work, uh, cleanup work in the networking stack. And I think this is because this will like come up in a later section uh, related to uh, block download speed. So I'll talk about that in a bit later when we get there. Uh, data's wallet accounts uh, hasn't moved. This is related to uh, being able to support multiple wallets inside Daedalus, which is important as they say, if you have a hardware wallet or whatever, you can imagine you have a Daedalus instance, and inside the Daedalus instance, you keep track of maybe like two or three hardware wallets, something like that. Uh, so it hasn't moved, uh, but hopefully they make progress on this. Next up is release strategy. Uh, this is something that has no progress bar. Uh, but it actually is something they've been working on a lot. So if you don't know, uh, Cardum uh, SL 1.2 was kind of the first version where they wanted to have a very r rigorous uh, testing pipeline. Uh, so they've been working on doing that to try and get a monthly ship cycle, right? So before this, it was just that like whenever they had features to ship, uh, then they would uh, ship it out. And so, you know, maybe it took a few months. Uh, but now they're trying to move on kind of like a monthly or bi-monthly, I'm not sure what will end up being, uh, cycle. And so they've uh, partnered up with some uh, firms to help in testing. They've been trying to set out a process. Charles has talked about this, I believe, in one of his update videos on Twitter. And uh, so they've been making a lot of progress on this. I think they hired a few people because they, they had previously had uh, job postings uh, looking for like a software test engineers, this kind of stuff. Uh, so hopefully this will translate to more uh, releases for uh, users. And the other thing I want to mention is that this is uh, owned by Jake Mitchell. And I think Cardano SL 1.2 was the first release that uh, Jake Mitchell uh, supervised. So congratulations to him uh, for a successful release. Next up is uh, Cardano State Core Registration. Uh, so they're saying that they had, uh, I forget the exact numbers, and I think it's like 2,000 people registered. Uh, for the staking pool testnet, uh, which I think they announced will be coming late Q3. Uh, yes, I'm staying right here, uh, late Q3 2018. Uh, and so they've closed the registration, so that's kind of what the update is, just say they've closed the registration, they're working towards this date, and that's that. Uh, next up, uh, there was an announcement for a uh, partnership with MidApps Plus. So MidApps Plus is a uh, South Korean uh, mobile payment pl platform. So they claim to be one of the largest ones. I'm not uh, Korean, so I don't know exactly the uh, environments over there. Uh, but they say it'll allow ADA purchases in uh, 33,000 stores and should be set to go uh, live in uh, Q3 2018. So if you're Korean, this is something to look forward to. Ledger Wallet, as I said uh, before, this is at 50%, so it looks like it doesn't move, but mostly they're making progress on like the API side, and that's kind of what uh, they're waiting on to get this working. So I think this like 50% represents like kind of the business side of the uh, progress, and so pro probably for like the business side, they're waiting for the implementation uh, from the wallet backend. Next up is a fashion network synchronization. So this is what I was talking about earlier uh, when I was saying networking has moved. I think part of it was one, uh, it was relabeled under the uh, concept of async uh, restore. So you might've noticed if you ever restore your wallet now on the Cardano SL 1.2 wallet, uh, you will not have to wait until the full restoration is done before you can open your wallet. Uh, so that's nice, that's a good feature to have. And they've also been working on making the block testing, block uh, synchronizing, or I should say block downloading faster from a network point of view. And so that was all encompassed under this new uh, item called faster network synchronization. And so that's kind of the one of the reasons why like this ate up the progress that would otherwise be uh, in the networking uh, update. Similarly, uh, they want to have more efficient uh, blockchain storage. So this will also make downloading the chain all that faster. Because if you haven't noticed now, the way the blockchain store is very inefficient. And so they've been trying to uh, clean that up. And essentially what happens is that when they made the original implementation of Cardano SL, they kind of took the, the quick and dirty route uh, to storing the chain on the computer. 
and now they're going through and making kind of like a more uh, robust implementation and so that's what uh, this represents and it's at 20% so uh, they've had a few design documents on this they've had one attempt to reduce the, uh, the size partially and hopefully we'll see more of this as they rewrite the data layer uh, which has been ongoing uh, as part of the wallet backend uh, rewrite so if you ever see like a pull request related to data layer all this kind of stuff uh, this is kind of targeting uh, this side of things Next up, they're talking about uh, Paper Wallets version 2. So if you're wondering the difference for version 2 is that uh, they will be able to support uh, restoring your Paper Wallet in read-only mode, right? And this is a feature that is uh, already mostly supported by the wallet backend uh, that's being rewritten, right? So they have a concept of passive wallets. And so you'll be able to have your Paper Wallet as a passive wallet. That way you have it on your computer. You can track uh, whether or not the funds in it change uh, all this kind of stuff uh, without having to actually put the uh, private key on your computer. So that's kind of what this is for. Uh, and yeah, so they say like you'll be able to uh, create it without having to sync the chain, without having to be online, uh, keep it in the passive mode, all this kind of good stuff uh, that'll help with the security. And uh, this will be compatible with the existing address scheme. Uh, so you'll not have to like uh, deal with the translation of the address scheme to be able to take advantage of all these features. Next up is uh, side chains. They've gone up five percent. Uh, I think this is still like a, a research item, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what this five percent is. I don't think there's any code associated with it. Uh, but they're eighty percent. So hopefully, we should see stuff coming soon. And actually, later on, we'll see uh, they have an item to uh, actually imp start imp the implementation of this. So this is like a most of the research type things. Uh, next up, accounting model uh, up twenty percent. So the accounting model is because the different side chains in Cardano may have uh, different models. That's to say, it could one could be UTX, so the other one could be the account, accounting based model that uh, Ethereum uses. If you don't know the difference, you can look it up. Uh, and so they've put out a research paper uh, previously on this topic, and so uh, they're still doing some more work. I think they want more work on the research side. I'm not sure how much of this is the uh, implementation side. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, multi-currency ledger this is just uh, having the ability to store uh, multiple currencies uh, or assets uh, that live on the settlement layer right so this is uh, still 20% I think you gotta basically wait for the uh, cardinal computation layer uh, for this uh, so that's why it hasn't moved Plutus core is up 1% uh, they've been making progress on this. I'll show you guys in the previous video. Uh, I think maybe a month ago or something like that. They put up a uh, draft paper of the semantics and grammar for uh, Plutus Napkin, which is like a simplified version of Plutus Core. Uh, so if you're interested, you can go check out their GitHub repository that they're like uh, slowly working on. Uh, we can check out some of their papers, uh, or like, I should say draft to some of their papers and some of the code that they've been working on. The yellow virtual machine uh, is up 15%, up to 90%. Uh, and so the target release date for this uh, testnet, so th remember that the yellow testnet is different from the KEVM testnet, right? So for yellow, they've been targeting uh, July. Uh, so they say they've got 10% of the work remaining. So it looks like probably they're on track unless something uh, disastrous comes up. Uh, so we can look forward to that. Uh, the code for this actually if you go look at the documentation on GitHub, they actually have like a lot of documentation about uh, design principles, why things are designed the way it is. Uh, so if you have, you know, a day or two to read through it, I mean, it's a lot of text and you kind of technical understanding to go through it, uh, but it's pretty interesting and pretty well uh, documented. Uh, yeah, so lastly, we have uh, the integration implementation of everything above, right? And this is like at 16%. So this is like a huge, uh, task and you know it involves integrating the uh, settlement layer with the computation layer right so that way they can connect to each other you can send your ADA from the uh, SL to the CL and back all this kind of good stuff and so obviously this will take a long time to make uh, and they're making progress uh, one thing they added uh, on here was a smart contract deployment interaction uh, so this is probably like a feedback from the 
sorry, the testnet, the KVM testnet they had, where now they want to create some uh, nice user interfaces to facil facilitate development uh, of these testnets and also uh, for the mainnet whenever that becomes available. One thing I noticed is that uh, they also said uh, they want to work on deployment. Sorry, I forget exactly where it is. Uh, they say that they want to have a kind of test net for some of these things to, uh, yeah, a private test net for testing code and deployment. Sorry. Yeah, I found it. Okay. So they want to have a, a private test net for this. And I think if this is like a part of the scope, then maybe this would be more than 0%, right? And the reason I see this is because they have a KVM test net, right? But actually, what hasn't been announced, but it has been in the works, is a Cardano SL test net. And you can actually go right now to the uh, IOHK repository. And you can find, I think it's in like IOHK ops. Uh, they have some documentation for how to set up a Cardano SL test net. And it's pretty comprehensive. So it leads me to believe uh, that they're going to have this coming up sometime soon-ish. I don't know the exact date, of course. And I think uh, this is also mentioned in the test nets video they uploaded a few weeks ago that they've been working on this. And so if that's the case, then they're making progress uh, towards the SL uh, test net deployment. And I think the only reason that you could justify 0% on this is if you say, okay, we'll have the Cardano SL test net, but you'll not yet be able to run Plutus Core uh, on it. And so uh, it kind of depends how you see it. Uh, yeah, for Gogwin testnet launch, this is still at uh, zero, or not zero, fifty percent, which is the same thing on its last uh, month. Uh, which is to say, probably I'm assuming what happens is that fifty percent is the KVM testnet launch, which has gone successfully, and then the other fifty percent is the yellow testnet. Uh, so that's kind of what these two probably uh, entail, and so that's why it hasn't moved. And then lastly, voting center is put here, but actually it's it's put in Basho also. Uh, and this is 20% of this doesn't move. I'm not sure what's happening with this item because it was like previously always in Gogwin, then it got moved to Basho. And now it looks like it's, it's in both, as you can see from the name Basho, but the fact that we're in the Gogwin section. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that. That's it for this roadmap update. Uh, if you want to keep track of uh, Cardano up updates as they come, uh, please follow me on Twitter, YouTube, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys uh, soon enough.